Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? <coughs> this morning, we're going to be reading out of Jeremiah 32, 41. I will rejoice over them to do them good. You guys know I did a playlist on Jeremiah. It's actually very interesting. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> The whole verse says, yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. Let's go up here a few. They shall be my people. I will be their God. Verse 36. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city of which you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Behold. I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger, in my fury, and in my and in great wrath. I will bring them back to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. Now, could he be talking about the tribulation? It's great wrath. Maybe. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. Then I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. This sounds just like he's talking about what's going to happen in the tribulation. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. This is definitely the tribulation he's talking about. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. For thus says the Lord, just as I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will bring them on them all the good that I have promised them. And fields will be bought in this land of which you say it is desolate, without man or beast. It has give, been given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men will buy fields for money, sign deeds and seal them, and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin, in the places around Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, in the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south, for I will cause their captives to return, says the Lord. Amazing. He's going to prosper his chosen people. How heart-cheering to the believer is the delight which God has in his saints. We cannot see any reason in ourselves why the Lord should take pleasure in us. We cannot take delight in ourselves. For we often have to groan being burdened, conscious of our sinfulness, and deploring our unfaithfulness. And we fear that God's people cannot take much delight in us, for they must perceive so much of our imperfections and our follies that they may rather lament our infirmities than admire our graces. <coughs> Most of us feel this way. If we get down to it deep down, most of us feel this way. It's one of those groanings of the spirit we have. And we can't see how anybody can find any value in us. We look at how we're treated, first of all, but we know something they don't. Grace and the love of God go above all those things. So it is incredible to find encouragements in the Bible that pertain to all of us that believe. But we love to dwell upon this transcendent truth, this glorious mystery, that as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so does the Lord rejoice over us. We do not read anywhere that God delighteth in the cloud-capped mountains or the sparkling stars, but we do read that he delighteth in the habitable parts of the earth, and that his delights are with the sons of men. We do not find it written that even angels give his soul delight, nor doth he say concerning cherubim or seraphim, Thou shalt be called Hephzibah, for the Lord delighteth in thee. But he does say all that to poor fallen creatures like ourselves, debased and depraved by sin, but saved, exalted, and glorified by his grace. That's an amazing thing to think about. Consider that. It's an amazing thing to consider. Of all his creation, we are the ones he pays so much so much attention to. It's amazing. And I've talked about this a couple of years ago. You know, it's the fine details. It's the minute interactions that God finds so incredible. The process 
of us reasoning things out, the, the process of thought, the process of, of suddenly gaining awareness and understanding. For some reason, all that is very interesting to God. And I love to, you know, finally reach the day where we can learn more about that. But he takes great joy in us. This is why he sent Jesus to die for us, to offer us salvation. The, the love Jesus has for us is just beyond understanding. In what strong language he expresses his delight in his people. We get it conceived of the eternal one as bursting forth into a song. Yet it is written, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. As he looked upon the world he had made, he said, it is very good. But when he beheld those who are the purchase of Jesus' blood, his own chosen ones, it seemed as if the great heart of the infinite, the great heart of God, could restrain itself no longer, but overflowed in divine exclamations of joy. Should we not we utter our grateful response to such a marvelous declaration of his love and sing, I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Father, you've given us such wonderful gifts, such wonderful blessings. We come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory for these things and so many more. We lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. Father, we love you. Now, we can't possibly love you as much as you love us. But when we start to gain insight into your personality, insight into your desires and what you were looking at and what you were looking for, it causes us to pause. To see just how much effort is being put into us being saved. How much is being moved and changed to bring us into salvation. What an amazing blessing. What an incredible thing that you're doing for us. Who are we that you would do that to us? And yet you do it. And while we, this side of heaven, we won't understand these things fully. Father, we can stop and give thanks for these things. Even if we don't understand them. I don't have to understand something to be thankful for it. It does. I don't have to know why you do what you do. <clears throat> Just be glad and thankful that you do it. And what amazing things you have done throughout human history. Unfathomable things. So we thank you for that. And like this devotion says here at the end. Should we not utter our grateful response to such a marvelous declaration of his love and sing, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Lord, that is our song today. Many of us can't sing, but this song emanates from our hearts. Why can't we bring it back to the simple things? Why can't we keep it in the basic things and be thankful for that? Father, thank you for the simple things. And thank you that we have with this heart song to be able to sing to you. Our evil and our depravity are no, no limits. And yet you still save us. From a lot, many of our perspectives, it, we think it might have been better if you'd have started over. But of course, then none of us would have salvation. So Father, we're thankful that you didn't start over. We're thankful that you didn't Wipe the slate clean and start again. We're thankful that you gave us this opportunity to come out of this, this life, this world, this way of being and enter into glory. And we shall be changed at that moment, at that entrance and made into our Lord to be just like him unable to sin, unable to be tempted, forever alive. Amazing. What a gift to have salvation. What a gift to have freedom. What a gift to be born again. And we take it for granted. People take salvation for granted. This is a big deal. We don't make near, near a big enough deal about it as we should.
Father, you, you look down from heaven, which is an incredible thing in and of itself. But then you came down in the form of our Lord Jesus. He descended from heaven and was born as a man and lived and then died for us. Told us the truth, personally delivered the message of truth. And then died and, and then rose and then went up and is sitting next to your right hand right now hearing this very prayer. I think it, it would stagger people people's minds if they would think about while they were praying that you're listening to it right now as I'm praying it. You're hearing it. The Bible records that these things emanate out from under your throne and prayers of the saints are burned like incense in heaven. It's amazing. There's so much more to this that we don't know. There's so much more that we don't understand. What a miracle it would be if we could learn it. What a miracle it would be. How would it change our understanding and our movements and our emotions and our lives if we understood even just a little bit of these things? How much would it cause us to act and be different? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <sighs> I thank you, Father, that we have these opportunities to be able to stop and think about these and consider these things. These devotions have been wonderful reminders of your, your joy, your peace, your glory, your loving kindness, your gifts, your blessings. We give thanks for it all, known and unknown. And that you have brought us together on a day like this to be able to go through these things and share them together. I mean, any of us can go to this app and get access to this. But how amazing is it for us to come together, even in video format, to share it with each other? And I am humbled that you have, for some reason, chosen me to do this. As, as minuscule as it is, as small as it is. But you've chosen me to do this and it is such a blessing, such an amazing, wonderful blessing to be able to share this with my brothers and sisters, to be able to share what you're showing me and revealing to me, to be able to share what I'm reading with them. And Lord, I look forward to the day, and I know we all do, when we can all fellowship together in your presence. I give you glory in your presence. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. I also want to add in this video, in this prayer, that I thank you for giving your angels charge over us. And I thank you for all the saints that came before us and paved the way for us to have this Bible and to have what we have now. Many of them paid with their life. I give thanks for them. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. We never stop and think about that. We never stop and consider those things. Like I mentioned yesterday at the end of uh, morning devotion, you know, we always talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and everybody tries to prove or disprove that, but they always forget there was a whole group of people that were raised that day. And the wonderful consideration of that is when you stop and think about that, it puts that much more emphasis on his resurrection. So not, not just one person raised, a bunch of people were raised. There's big news here. There's a lot that went on here. And if you didn't catch that, I shared it at the end. Basically, when you think about one person raising from the dead at that time, going back to his household, you know, they had anywhere from, you know, 10, let's say 10 to 12 people in their house. So let's say there was 10. Well, then they went to their neighbors. That's another 20 on each side, 10 on each side. And then they talked to their neighbors and they talked to their neighbors. And then the friends were coming out. I mean, you know, any one of those people that raised could have talked to 100 people within two hours of being raised. That's over 50,000. That's a lot of people. Word would spread it fast. But Jesus' resurrection was the most important one. But let us not forget there was more to this. These are the wonderful things 
we can consider about the Lord, that he goes out of his way to show the greatest level of evidence, to prove everything that his word says. And we have written account of all this. But he, he goes out of his way. These little details have so much to tell us. And it's such a wonderful thing. And so we should be thankful that we have this word that tells us these things, that gives us the ability and the ammunition to go and share with others the truth, to convict their hearts that they might be saved. Who are we that he would look on us? We don't know. And you know what? It doesn't matter. He did look upon us. And he saved us. And he's using us to spread his truth everywhere and anywhere possible <clears throat> for the glory of his name. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.